Hi, I'm Rebecca in the Keys with Florida Keys Television TV 88, and it has been one year since Hurricane Irma hit the Florida Keys with sustained winds of 130 miles per hour. The eye hit Cudjo Key 30 miles south of Marathon, Florida, and today we're going to talk to Marathon officials about what they've done in the last year, the progress that they've made cleaning up their beautiful city, and what we still need to do. So stay tuned, Marathon, Florida, one year after Irma. Today I am with Captain John Johnson. He is the fire chief here in Marathon and he's going to talk to us today about fire services post uh, Irma efforts and where we stand almost one year from when Irma hit. How are you doing? I'm doing great today, Rebecca. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Now tell us, how did Marathon handle uh, Hurricane Irma? Okay, first I'd like to start by thanking the uh, people that I work with, my firefighters, my paramedics, the police officers. Um, they all did a tremendous job responding to the emergency, stood by everybody, started assisting, even go down farther into all our local departments, our public works departments, our wastewater departments. They really stood up and, and made this area safe as we could and back together as quick as we could. With the lessons, some of the lessons that we've learned, which worked out very well, mm -hmm. is um, like the public works director told you to make sure you shut off your power, your water when you leave the residencies. That's very important because mm -hmm. um, what happens when you do lose power, people turn the power back on, the power company comes in, you can experience a fire, you can experience damage. We had several broken water lines all over. That's why we had pressure for the longest time because we were going around closing down all the water lines. Um, the other, and that was a very important process that we did. We actually hired contractors to go out there to every residence and check them for safety because she could secure the power and secure the water before it came back on, which so I feel. turning off the water was a big issue. Huge issue. Okay. And not just here, all the way up the line in the Mila Mirada and those areas. People don't think about it, but their water lines connected out to the back of their docks. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the docks and all got destroyed from the storm, not necessarily the homes then, but the docks did. So that just broke all the PVC lines and left all the water just flowing. Wow. So that's one important thing. The other important thing that was noted that the people, the Keys, listen this time. We said evacuate. We had a probably with the largest evacuation, I think, in history. Everybody got in and left. And I know that's very difficult to do as a homeowner in the Keys. You want to stay here. You want to protect your property. Mm -hmm. You don't want to lose anything. Um, there was some issues with re-entry, um, but again, we were trying to get it open as fast as we could, and, and, but you got to realize once we open that up, we don't want you to become part of the problem because once we do let you back into the Keys, if you're not self-sufficient, you don't have your own water, your own food, uh, there's no place to go buy that once you're here, then everybody comes to us and they want housing, water, and food. That just becomes an additional burden slowing down the process of recovery. So we do appreciate people leaving when we tell them to leave, mm -hmm. but also we, with the understanding is we are going to protect your property and get them back into the area as soon as possible. Why do you think it is that more people left this time when you told them to leave? Truthfully, I think they saw the magnitude and the uh, size of this storm. I mm -hmm. think it was very well publicized by the National Hurricane Society or local news areas. Mm -hmm. um, and this was a substantial storm. It sit, sat over us for 10 hours mm -hmm. and it was moving. It started up an ocean reef, but by the time it hit land, it was down below the Seven Mile Bridge. Mm -hmm. So um, there was the uncertainty of where to go. So I think that happened and another factor I think, which and uh, people might think it's funny, but when we evacuated the jail in Key West, they're saying they're evacuating the jail, something's coming, we're all leaving. Okay, so, so they're, they're smart, they, they know. They're smart, <laughs> they're watching. Um, and with the recovery, the other lessons learned that I want to try to pass on to the people is, and one of the problems we had was, people waited too long to fuel up their vehicles. Mm -hmm. We had people calling us in the 11th hour saying, we need to evacuate, but we can't because we don't have fuel. Mm -hmm. So. Be prepared early. Don't wait till a storm comes. Have your plan ready. Know what you're doing. Um, everybody's talking about making sure your property is safe, putting the loose materials away, making sure your shutters are up, making sure stuff's not going to fly away, hurt your property or somebody else's. But also make sure you have a plan that where you're going to go, mm -hmm. how you're going to get there, and a means to stay there for a little while before you can come back. Mm -hmm. Right. All right, Chief, I've heard about your ambulance services. 
Stellar ambulance services here. Tell us about that. Well, one of the issues that occurred during the storm, as you well know, we lost our fisherman's hospital. Mm -hmm. It, it um, how can I say, underwent several um, damages. Everything from flood to wind to obviously with loss of power, mm -hmm. the, uh, the things that grow after the loss of power, all the mold issues. So mm -hmm. that, that building was shut down. Uh, we worked out of a MASH unit, we called in what we call a DMAT team, and they were actually set up behind City Hall, and that's where we were taking all the patients to begin with. Um, after that, they put another MASH unit up at Fisherman's Hospital. The issue is there's no essential services there. In other words, anything major has to be transported off-island. For years, we've run an ambulance service for that purpose. Not only just a 911 service, but when you're sick and you need treatment that can't be done locally, we take you to where you need to go. Miami, Homestead, mm -hmm. um, even up to Mariners or even the Lower Keys where those facilities are, uh, they're available for you. Um, since the storm and even before the storm, we started uh, gearing up our inner facility crew. They're all trained to what they call critical care medics. Mm -hmm. uh, we carry 73 medications, so basically we can do almost everything in the back of that rig um, that they can do in a hospital except, you know, surgery. Right. So we're prepared to make sure that patient has the best outcome possible because uh, we're looking even on a good day an hour drive from here up to the mainland. Right, exactly. So, so your ambulances are equipped, they are highly capable. The manpower and everything else are highly capable and we provide that service to the Citizens of Marathon because we want a positive outcome. Wonderful. Is there anything else you want to tell the Citizens of Marathon? Just that thank you all for your support. Uh, the, one pe the one group of people that I left out I think are the citizens themselves. They showed such spirit coming out, Marathon Strong, chipping in, coming to the City Hall, asking what they could do, where they can help out. So our own citizens were helping out neighbors, helping out them, them after themselves, helping out the neighbors, helping out the community. So thank you citizens and continue to move forward and we never want to see this again. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Chief. And we have, it's been a pleasure having you here and talking to the Citizens of Marathon about what's going on in the post Irma and how to prepare, how to better prepare next time. So we appreciate everything that you do here in the Florida Keys. Thank you, Rebecca. All right, so Chief John has been one of the series that we're doing in Marathon of the officials in Post Irma almost one year later. And you can look for the rest of the series on Florida Keys Television, TV 88. Rebecca in the Keys, signing off for now.